The Dragon Ball Super Card Game is a two-player game that features battles with characters taken from the Dragon Ball universe. That includes the original Dragon Ball show, DBZ, Dragon Ball Super, and even Dragon Ball Heroes, which has a lot of Dragon Ball Heroes, actually. Anyway, my name is Brian, and I go by Android. I've been playing the game since about set three, which is about three or four years now. We're going into set 16, and I realize I really don't have an official how to play video outside of the one I did with DeFree. So today we're gonna go through how to play the game and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll actually know how to play or at least get started. Before we start, I actually want you to familiarize yourself with all of the resources that are available to you. There's the Dragon Ball Super Card Game official website, which actually hosts all of the official cards, the upcoming products and dates, events and where they'll be located usually, uh, articles from the developer themselves, and I would recommend to kind of take a look at any of the rule area for any of the questions, including the app, how to play, uh, like a demo game, and as well as a helpful guide for any of the uh, general rules that I might reference throughout the video. There's a lot more there too. There's also the official Facebook group that actually has the new reveals and as well as news. There's the main Dragon Ball discussion group. It's pretty much the largest group that has a lot of discussion going on. There's also DBS Deck Planet, which is my preferred deck building website. There's a lot of cool features. You can pretty much see all of the cards that have been released and it's updated pretty frequently. And of course, this channel, just Subscribe, that's all I'm asking for. That way you can see a lot more gameplay, content, discussions, and even other card games outside of Dragon Ball. Before we get into anything, you gotta understand why are you even playing this game in the first place? So what is the goal? And that goal is to win the game by taking all of the life of your opponent. And that sounds a little brutal, but basically you start out with eight life, both players that is, and eventually as you do battle between leaders, uh, you go down to zero life and whoever does that first loses the game and of course whoever has more life wins the game. But of course there are other win conditions, more notably being um, the one who runs out of cards in their deck, like a mill strategy, would lose as well. As far as deck building, it, you can actually have up to 60 cards, the minimum is 50, and most of the time you can kind of throw it in whatever you want as long as the colors and as well as the restrictions of the leader or whatever may be actually adhere to what you're trying to do. But for the most part, you can kind of build whatever you want and throw whatever you want together uh, based on your goal. Next, I want you to get real familiar on the types of cards. And when I say types of cards, there are pretty much four different types of cards, which you can actually see at the top right of the card whenever you pick one up. I'm sure you've seen the art for it and uh, it's a good distinction uh, of whatever card it is, of course, is the type. There are leader cards, which actually start at the beginning of the game. You don't start the game without a leader card, and it's pretty much your bread and butter, the most important card of your deck, only because everything kind of revolves around that, and uh, you take life based on that as well. Then there's battle cards, which basically you can swing and, and attack and use them for different effects. The one that's listed here is, of course, a vanilla. It doesn't have any text, just like the ones that we've seen uh, onto the side of it. These guys have combo costs, which you use it within the battle, which we'll go over in a little bit. They have an attack power, just like the leader card, but these guys uh, can be removed from the field and as well as the game. Then there's extra cards where you pay the cost and then you get the effect. These usually don't end up on the field or anywhere else unless otherwise stated. You just kind of use them from your hand and then you get the effect after you pay the cost. And then lastly, which is a pretty much a new addition to the game pretty recently, these are unison cards. They're similar to Planeswalkers in Magic the Gathering where you pay a cost, you get an amount of markers, and then you minus or plus those markers to get the effects that you actually do want to use. Okay, let's talk about areas. And this is a pretty normal card play mat. And uh, it doesn't have the actual areas, but with the power of editing, I will go ahead and put them in. The first area that you want to be familiar with is basically your leader area. And your leader area will be located at the top left. Right next to it is going to be your unison area. To the right of that is going to be your battle area where all of your battle cards will be at. In the middle is going to be where you do your combo step and put your combo cards. And then this is where you put your energy at the bottom of the play area. You place your life on the left side, your deck on the right middle, and then your drop area right below it. 
So to get ready for pretty much any game, you first have to put out your leader. So it has to be out in the leader front. Most of the time you can take the look at the leader power and being at 10K, uh, you can flip it back over at to 15K and usually has pretty distinctive art of which one is the front and which is the back. This of course is the front. You place the deck down into the deck area and then you roll uh, to find out who goes first. Of course, you can use two dice. I'm um, just doing one just for reference. Of course, I went ahead and rolled a five to a one. Let's say the opponent went ahead and did a one. I went ahead and did a five. I go first. I would recommend to go ahead and shuffle your deck. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to shuffle. I don't really recommend riffle shuffle, even though that's a pretty common type of shuffle for a lot of different people and a lot of different card games or at least just cards in general. But uh, for me, a good old shuffle, maybe uh, put a, a bunch of piles and uh, put all of the cards in each of them to shuffle would be nice. The whole point is just so you don't get the same card over and over again, and you have a good amount of uh, randomness to yourself. After you shuffle, you go ahead and draw six cards. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna go ahead and put them out right out here. You can actually choose which cards you want to keep and then put into your deck, uh, shuffle and then put it right back or draw the same amount of cards you put back. This of course is called a mulligan. It's pretty common in most uh, card games. Some of them don't, um, but for this card game, you, uh, you're, I mean, it's, it's, it's a good thing to have. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> the whole point of the mulligan is just so you can have an ideal start of hand. Um, some, some decks kind of focus on higher cost cards or at least combo, uh, oriented as far as what it wants to do as the purpose of the deck. So it's pretty important that you actually do get the cards that you need for this deck. I kind of want to see unison and I kind of want to see these one drops, uh, afterwards. So these aren't too bad. Then after you, uh, get the cards after your mulligan, you use the same, uh, side of the deck or the deck itself after you shuffle and get the mulligan to place the eight life uh, to the right or to the left of your uh, play area. It doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as the eight actually do fit and it's visible and you know how many you have and your opponent knows how many you have and vice versa. From there, you're pretty much ready to start the game. And uh, before we do that, let's go into a little bit more of the card types. Now that we're familiar with the play area, I kind of want to go into the details of some of the card types that we talked about before, before we actually go into what a battle looks like in the battle phases. Again, the first thing are leader cards. They start as soon as you start playing the game. As soon as you start setting it up, just like how I showed, you basically start out with that leader and it has various effects based on, you know, what it actually says on the card. Leaders can attack pretty much anything on the field unless it otherwise states. And it's again, you're kind of your bread and butter. Think of the leader as an extension of yourself and that you want to defend as much as you can using the energy that you have and the life that you have. And as soon as you run out of life, you lose the game. And of course, when you flip it over, just like how I may have shown you in the previous video or part of this section, you basically have the leader back that shows at the top right there and you are awakened. And again, a lot of leaders have different ways to flip over and to awaken, but usually you go into a stronger state or a stronger type of card where again, on the other side, you have a 10,000 power and now you have 15,000 power. So straight off the bat, you have a 5,000 extra power to work with throughout the game. Most of the time, the name and as well as the traits remain the same, but if they don't, they actually do change based on um, the bottom right and as well as the name that you see in the middle. And of course, it really just depends on what type of card you're using because sometimes they actually say something and refer to the leader as your, your leader is this you get to do this and there's battle cards so as soon as you start paying the cost for battle cards uh, for instance this thing this thing is a three cost with two specified green which means you have to have two green energy to pay 
uh, the three costs, including the three costs. So three, and then two of those three have to be green energy. Um, you get to use whatever effects that actually go off, and then you get to use it as a battle card in order to attack your uh, the opponent's leader or other battle cards or units and cards. These guys do have traits at the bottom right, as far as their name, their trait, and as well as the Sangha, which usually doesn't matter, but they also do have the combo cost that I mentioned before, and their attack powers usually differ depending on the cost. Usually when you have higher costed battle cards, they're usually higher costs or higher attack power or higher effects, like they're the more effective. As you go throughout the game and you pay more energy for higher cost battle cards or higher cost things, you are rewarded for better effects. But that means if you don't end the game there, you go to the other side with less energy. Then we have extra cards that I mentioned before. So basically these guys aren't usually able to attack unless it's otherwise stated or it makes something else. As in you play the extra card from your hand, you pay the cost. Cards usually tell you when you can actually activate them. And basically you just have to read the card to understand what it actually wants to do or what it can do, I should say. There are a lot of keywords, which we're actually going to go through uh, a major, some of the major keywords that you'll run into in for the game. And then lastly are the unison cards that I talked about. Basically, when you pay a certain amount of energy, let's say for this, it has X, as in you can pay X amount of energy with at least one yellow energy as a requirement. You pay that much plus whatever else, and you get that many markers after. For example, if you have three yellow energy open, you pay three yellow energy, and then you get three markers on this unison. And then after that, you can use the plus one, as in you can add one marker and then gain that effect as long as you cost or you meet the cost basically. Or you can minus four as long as you have that many markers on that unison in order to get that effect as well. For example, for this Mai, you can plus one activate main during your main phase and then draw a card and then place one at the bottom of the deck. The thing about the unison cards is that for both turns and for any time that you use a unison, you can only use one of their plus or minus effects per that turn. So you can't plus one and then minus four the same turn. These guys usually don't get removed normally. Usually you have to swing at it. You have to meet the attack power. For instance, this one is 4,000. So you have to meet 4,000 or higher in order to uh, minus uh, a marker. These guys don't have a combo step as well. So when you do attack it, uh, they can't combo out of it unless they uh, count it, counter or negate or block out of it and make sure it doesn't get hit or finish the battle there. If you ever get lost, usually with the starter deck, it actually comes with some of this, these details for it or with it, I should say. But go ahead and reference all of the information that I've, I've re referenced before as far as the details on traits and where are things located card types, etc., because this will actually show you what that looks like. This can be found on the official Dragon Ball website under rule, and then uh, scroll all the way down to the bottom where you can find all that information. Now, finally, let's go into a battle and show you some examples for that. So now you know a little bit more about the card types. Um, let's try to mimic a little bit of the start of a game first. So again, we went ahead and mulliganed, uh, we drew the six, put back the what we didn't want to see anymore, shuffled, and then drew uh, five more because we kept one. After that, we went ahead and put the eight life afterwards, and now we have the six cards to start the game. At the start of the turn, you do go ahead and draw, but because I'm going first, you don't actually get to draw and you don't get to attack. This is because you're up on one energy, which is basically an extra turn or an extra action versus your opponent. And sometimes that's advantageous and other times it just really depends on your deck. So for this deck, uh, basically what I'm looking at is a couple cards that are pretty much duplicate. And what I want to do is charge a card that I either don't want to see, I'm going to see again, uh, I don't need right now, or I just don't, I, I just know that I uh, don't need in this matchup or this match. And you'll understand that as you go ahead and use your deck and gain a little bit more experience. I'm going to go ahead and charge this card because this is a, an extra card that is also a negate or counter, which stops an attack, but I'm got, not going to need that because I'm running at eight life and I highly doubt I'll need that early on to the game. Sometimes you'll have to keep it if you know that the opponent, it might be aggressive or you know that you have to stop attacks in the future. Now that I've charged, that actually completes the first part of the turn. So you draw, you charge, and then you get to go into your main phase in which you play out cards, you use skills, and you can do battle after you're done paying those costs 
and doing whatever you need to. So for example, for this, I have one red energy. This is the color, and this is also going to be the energy and the thing that I pay cost for. So we can take a look at this one drop kunchi, which basically means this is a one cost, which is a little bit easier to see the non-foil version. So one cost and red dot there is a specified cost. So in turn, I can go ahead and rest or suspend, I should say, in order to pay a certain cost in order to pay for that card. So as long as it has the cost and you're meeting the cost and you pay that cost, you now get the effect. This Kunshi says the auto, when this card is played, you get to draw one card. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now I have another one cost Jiren in my hand, which can now combo into these other cards where I can evolve, your EX evolve on top of a red Universe 11 Jiren, which this is. So taking a closer look at this leader, basically, again, you're in your main phase whenever you're paying for uh, costs or doing skills and, and things like that. You're only entering the battle phase or doing battle when you announce an attack, which we'll go into it uh, in a little bit. But just like I mentioned before, this little activate main here says once per turn, I can add a card uh, to my hand and then look at the top seven of my deck and then play out a red universe 11 card with energy cost of one in rest mode and then shuffle your deck. Notice that this doesn't have a cost unless it says otherwise. So basically the cost is to add one card from my hand or to my life to my hand and then I get to do the effect. So if you do want to do that, you just announce that you're going to be doing the activate main and then pay the cost and then do the effect. So let's take a step back for a second. Again, we went ahead and went first. We uh, went head in. So first, let's take a step back again. So we started first. We drew our six cards, mulligan, charged for our charge phase, went into our main phase to do our effects, paid one to get the auto in order to play the card and draw one card and pay that cost. This cost on the leader is an activate main, which means I'm going to pay the cost that says so, which is taking a card out of my life and add it to my hand, and then look at the top seven. Looking at the top seven, it just depends if you do see which, by the way, my luck is not is not looking too great, by the way. <laughs> Just a lot of copies. This is a terrible, terrible thing for a demonstration. I apologize. But I went ahead and looked at the top seven. Uh, and I do have a red Universe 11. This is a red card. You can tell um, by the bottom right, if I haven't mentioned that before. It has a set number and as well as the color of what the card is. And the trait at the bottom right says Universe 11. So I get to play it in rest mode. So the remaining six cards that I saw are going back into my deck and I have to shuffle because that's part of the effect. So now that I paid the cost, which is taking a life and using the activate main in my main phase and uh, looking at the top seven and playing out a one drop uh, universe 11 card. Since I played it, I get to use the effect from it. And now this card says when this card is played, you look at the top five of your deck and add one red Jiren card or one red unison card with a specified cost of one among them, add it to your hand and then shuffle your deck. So note that it does say up to. So if I don't see any in that top five, that's okay. I just get to shuffle my deck. So let's go ahead and do that. Since I went ahead and used my leader skill, I pay, uh, paid the cost in taking a life and then found this in my top seven. I'm gonna go ahead and look at the top five and see if I have a target uh, for that. So what I'm looking for is a red Jiren, which this guy is, he is a red Jiren or a uh, red Unison card with a specified cost of one. And since this is a uh, kind of an early card and it's pretty vital to the deck, I'm going to go ahead and add that and shuffle my deck afterwards. So now I have completed basically uh, a few things. So I charged, have the red energy, paid it for that one and that one specified for this Kunshi and drew one. And then I went ahead and used the activate main because it is my main phase. Um, use the top seven to play this guy and then use his effect to look at the top five and then got this guy. Um, usually as you run out of energy, just like how in the Dragon Ball show, they start fighting and they start doing stuff. And soon, as soon as they start running out of energy, they stop doing things because, well, you run out of energy. <laughs> Cool thing about this deck is that some of the stuff is actually free or it doesn't cost energy. I'm gonna go ahead and compare two of the cards that are in my hand for an example. So this one says EX Evolve, your leader card is a red Universe 11 card, which is my Jiren. Um, I get to 
have that as a cost and evolve or EX evolve on top of a red Jiren card with energy cost of one. If I do that, I get the auto effect when this card is played, draw one and then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards. It gets negative 10,000 power for the turn. In this case, because we're going first, they're not gonna have anything on their field. But if they did, uh, that would be cool because if something, let's say um, this Jiren uh, on their field, let's say they're playing the same deck, this is 4,000. If you do negative 10,000 to that card, it places into the drop because it is more than what the attack power is. So what I can do is EX Evolve by placing it on top of the card. And then now I get the effect because I met the cost. The cost was having a red universe 11 leader and then having a one drop uh, Jiren or one cost Jiren uh, on the field. Now most cards or most effects will refer to things um, in active tense. So again, you're gonna have to have something on the field in order to evolve or place it on top. I'm gonna mention it later or before or throughout the video. There are a lot of keywords and a lot of things to kind of keep up with. If you have any questions or any doubts about things, reference to the official Dragon Ball card website. So that way you can look up any of the keywords. So again, I'm out of energy. I don't really have anything else to play. Uh, I'm looking at my hand, everything is costing a lot when I don't have anything to use it for. So I get to pass my turn and it goes into the end phase. Now from there, the opponent gets to do the same thing. They get to charge, they get to play cards and also attack after the first turn is up. Now, before we go any further, let's talk about the battle phases and as well as other effects. So what we have here is basically an example of a pretty typical game. We have the red Jiren that we had all of the steps that we went through already versus the God Goku, which is notably more known as Soul Striker, which is pretty typical in the game itself nowadays. And uh, the show itself actually. The Goku deck basically uh, went ahead and did his mulligan, placed his life, and uh, is ready to start the second turn since the Jiren player went ahead and ended it his turn. So what that means is now the Soul Striker player can draw one card and add it to his hand. And just like we did with Jiren, we're gonna go ahead and charge a card. One thing I did not mention is that um, some of these cards are a singular color, which again, you can see at the bottom right of the card, but some of the cards are also multicolored, which this one is actually blue yellow. Again, you can see that at the bottom right of the card where the set number and the number of the uh, card is, and it'll have the uh, two or singular color. Also has energy exhaust, which means it comes into rest mode or inactive mode. Generally, when you actually have any card that you want to place into your energy area, you have to put it upside down and place it in active mode. But with this card, because it is a, a multicolor card and it has that energy exhaust, you have to place it in rest mode. That's another example of a keyword that you'll have to get familiar with as soon as you get to that part of deck building. This is in rest mode, and now we're going into the main phase. We can play cards and do things with effects. Basically, uh, all the cards that are in my hand costs a certain amount or requires a cost. For instance, this unison has three specific blue energy to pay. This has two, this has one, this has four, etc. Knowing that, the only thing to really do is to attack the opponent. You're free to attack basically anything that is in rest mode outside of their energy, of course. That includes their battle cards, uh, unison cards, which can be inactive, or their leader card, which can be inactive or in rest mode. Basically, right side up or sideways. So to attack, you basically take a card and you put it to sideways and you declare attack to what you want to attack. So for, for instance, if you want to remove something like their battle card in battle, as in you're attacking with 10,000 to their 15,000, you can do that. It's just that you have to go through the phases like the combo step, which we'll go into in a second in order to remove it. Or you can go to their 10,000 leader in order to make them take a life. Let's say that was the case. I went ahead and placed this from active mode to rest mode. And I said, I'm going to go ahead and attack your leader. Your opponent now has the chance to go into the counter step 
or to declare counters, which means for something like this, the Violent Rays, I, he, they can pay one energy at one red specific cost in order to counterattack and negate the attack as it says. But because they have no energy open and they have no negates or no counters to respond with, the opponent can say no negates or no counters. Then it goes back to their side in the offensive step. Here is where we can combo and do other effects like activate battle that I mentioned before. Since this sensu bean is an activate battle, which means you can use activate battle during the offensive step or the combo step, sometimes referred as the same thing, and pay the cost of one and one blue energy and get the effect. But because we have arrested energy, we actually can't do that. Now that they said no negates or no counters, that means you can actually do the auto effect when this attacks. This says you get to choose one when this attacks. You can either draw one card or you can switch up to one of your mono blue energies and switch it to active mode. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have a multicolored energy as in two colors. Mo Monocolored means one as in the card itself is only blue. So I recommend to go ahead and just draw the card and declare that you're choosing to draw a card. You can only choose one, so let's go ahead and do that. So now we're gonna go ahead and draw this nice little tape on unison. Then it goes back to the opponent's side to defend themselves. Then after you do that and resolve your auto, and after that effect resolves and you draw your card, you actually get to go into what's called the offensive step and the combo phase. Remember these battle cards have these um, numbers on the side to them, that means you get to use those cards in a combo step. Combo power is the indication here where it is a 5,000 or whatever it may be. And then the circle in the number uh, right to the left is the cost of that combo. So what that means is that when you're attacking, you go into the combo step, you're gonna use these cards to combo and boost up the power of your attack. So now we're looking at the defensive step for the opponent, which means they can defend themselves to not take damage for that attack. So they're looking at 15,000 to their 10,000, which means they would have to get over that because if it's under, as in 10,000, or at, which is 15,000, they get to 15,000 instead, they have to take that damage. So for instance, if you wanted to combo out and get out of that attack, let's say you don't want to take um, a life or a damage here, that means you have to use from your hand uh, and things that actually have a full cost and combo power and use it in your combo area. So for instance, for this, this is 15,000 to their 10,000. You just add up to this zero, 5,000, zero, 5,000, which adds up to 20,000. And now you're done with that battle because you comboed out. When you do combo with things and the battle is over, they go to your drop area, which is indicated right below your deck. Now that the Goku swung and there, there's pretty much nothing to do because everything is uh, costly, you get to pass the turn. So that's basically how a couple turns and a battle would go. As soon as the uh, turn is done for one opponent, it goes to the other. And I'm going to go ahead and switch everything to active mode um, because that is what happens when you pass over the turn. The player that gets passed to uh, starts out the turn by drawing just like last time. And then afterwards, they have to choose to charge a card. For this, I'm going to go ahead and charge this other extra card. Now I'm going to go through a couple turns without any explanation. So that way you can kind of understand how the game flow works. So I went ahead and charged. And then now I'm going to use the active main to take a life and add it to my hand and choose a red universe 11 uh, from the top seven to play into rest mode. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle the deck right after. And then because I play the card, I get to use the auto effect which is draw one. I have two open energy that I can use, and that really depends on what I wanna use it for. I'm gonna go ahead and make room for my unison, which I wanna pay one energy that it requires, the red energy. And after that, I get to put a marker in order to indicate that I paid that one energy, and now it has that one marker. Remember that unisons can only use one of their effects, either the plus or minus, pretty much once per turn. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the plus one in order to get to two markers. It's pretty important that these guys have more and more markers because now the opponent has to attack it 
and actually waste their attacks or use their attacks to remove the markers. Now that's important because now you can't use the minus seven if you don't have seven markers. The plus one says I get to play something at the end of the turn, so nothing happens just yet. I'm gonna go ahead and declare an attack, which means I'm going to uh, put that into rest mode and declare an attack to their leader. This attack is going to be 10,000 to their 10,000. They say no counters because there is nothing that they can do with this rested energy and it goes to my combo step. To make sure that they actually do end up taking the damage, I wanna go ahead and combo with this zero 5,000, which will make this into a 15,000 attack. Now it goes back into their combo step and because they're 10,000, they have to get to 20, which means they have to waste a couple cards in their hand if they have two zero fives, just like we did before. Because this is a normal attack and I get to take a life, which is adding to their hand, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. This goes into drop from the combo area, and now I get to do any other effects and returns to my main phase. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this into rest mode and then the clearing attack to their leader. This is going to be the same thing being a 15,000 to their 10,000. So now it goes into their counter step. They say no counters again. This goes into their combo step. I'm gonna go ahead and say no combos because this is already a pretty big attack to their only 10,000. This is the same situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a life for that. As the Jiren player, I'm taking a look at my attacks. I did some damage and I only have one open energy. So I'm gonna go ahead and end my turn. Because I ended my turn and declared it, this effect goes off and I get to play something in rest mode. I wanna choose this one Jiren here and then look at the top five. So this is the same Jiren as before. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this red Jiren. Actually, you know what? I'll take this one since it looks pretty. Now that I've ended my turn, I've done my effects and everything is in line. It goes back to the Goku and everything goes back into active and he gets to draw a card. Then I'm gonna go ahead and charge, which I'm just gonna go ahead and charge maybe this uh, TP on and put it, put it upside down to indicate that it is an energy. Now that I have the blue and yellow, I get to pay for blue costs and as well as yellow costs. I can actually pay for this guy this one energy and one yellow specified, which means this one energy has to be yellow, which I do have right here. And I get to use this effect, which is draw one. Now that I did my effects and I did what I needed to do, I'm gonna go ahead and put this to rest mode and then declare an attack on their battle card because I want to remove it. This is a pretty good idea because this is 10,000 to their 4,000. Either one of these would be a good idea to uh, attack. So again, if they have a negate or declare a, a counter, they can do this here, but the Jiren doesn't have it. So it's gonna be no counters. So now I get to combo, which this is 10,000 already. They have to combo a couple to get over that 10,000 threshold. So going back to their combo step, it's just going to die if they don't combo out. When it loses to battle, it means it gets KO'd and it gets placed into the drop area. But that's pretty much it. I'm gonna stop it there just because you can kind of go back and forth and start reading the effects and start doing things as you would because pretty much every single battle or at least the way that the game flows is pretty much the same as you go on. If you have any doubts, please reference the game guide and as well as the rule book found on the official website. All right, the last thing I wanna teach you is, uh, again, we went through a couple of battles or at least uh, an example of what a battle should look like and as well as how to set up and go through your charge phase and things like that. Uh, this is pretty much a section where you can understand some of the major keywords and some of the examples that actually carry out uh, due to those keywords. So autos are usually in blue. You can see it on this Goku card and these skills usually depend on the text of the card and it activates whenever it actually has that timing. So for instance, this one says auto, You when you play this card from your hand, you draw one card. So let's say you have a black energy in your energy area. You pay that one black energy because it has that one and that one black energy as a requirement. And then you get to draw one card afterward. Autos usually happen after a counter step. Uh, so if there's a counter play or something beforehand that is a counter uh, in a response to this, those will happen first. And then this will happen afterwards. Another example of how this kind of works is that 
Um, for this auto, it says during your opponent's turn, or if it's your opponent's turn, at the end of the battle where this is used as a combo. So let's say you just finished the battle that you just did, and you defended with this one uh, 10,000 power, one cost. So you pay one energy, 10,000 power, and then at the end, end of it, this auto goes off. You get to play one skill list or up to one skill list with a cost two or less from your deck or drop area, and then shuffle your deck if you, if you look through it, and then you can't activate any of the auto effects on copies of those cards. So you can't just keep comboing them and getting these two costs, basically. So the cool thing about this card is basically uh, you use this as a combo, and then when the battle is finished, the auto goes off right after, and then you get the effect. So here's another interesting one. This guy is a blocker. So uh, you get to play him or if you have him out on the field uh, and then when it gets removed from battle. So basically, if your opponent has five or more cards in their hand, let's say I'm the one with a Zarbon on the field. This guy gets removed or it gets KO'd from battle and they have five or more cards in their hand. You then get the effect if they had five or, or four or less in their hand, you don't get the effect. But when you do meet the effect or meet the conditions, I should say, uh, you get to or your opponent chooses one card out of their hand and then place into the drop area. As long as you meet the cost, which is just having this guy on the field and removed or KO'd from battle um, and they you and then they have five or more cards in their hand, they get to drop one card from their hand. And of course, autos aren't exclusive to battle cards and extra cards. Uh, they can apply to leaders too. So with this and really most leaders, when you attack with this card, you get to draw one card and then you may, as in you can or, or choose not to basically, choose one of your non-token, non-black battle cards and place in your trigger drop area. So let's say we had um, that Zarbon. Uh, if you do so, you get to choose or your opponent chooses one card from your hand and then place into the drop area. The way that this works with the Zarbon itself, you can actually choose the Zarbon and then choose this and then basically this will go off first and then the Zarbon will go off afterwards. Because remember, this just says the Zarbon that is, if it's removed by a skill, which is the skill of your leader effect, that Broly effect that we just looked at, uh, you meet and you meet the requirements, they get to choose one card. So things like that will kind of create combos uh, within the deck building that you may have. All right, let's look at Keyword skills, which are usually in red. And of course, I will link in the description below as far as where to find all of the keywords and as well as the resources that we talked about before. But you can find all the keywords there. There are a lot of them in the game. I'm not going to go through all of them, but some of the ones that are kind of important that you'll run into. Like I said here, keywords are generally things that you can, like it says here, keywords can generally tell you what it can do or what it cannot do and what it affects and can't affect. That's usually the thing that I usually go for when remembering keyword skills. For instance, this thing has barrier. So let's say you paid four and the two specified, uh, so two red out of the four energy you paid for this Sun Goku. And when it's on the field, this actually says that since it has this keyword barrier, it can't be chosen by the skills of your opponent's card. So let's say that Broly that we looked at before, this one says activate main, which is during your main phase, that person's main phase. Uh, you get to choose one card from your hand and place into your drop area and then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards to KO it. So you're pitching one card and you're choosing one card on your opponent's field. That card ends up being this Goku. They actually can't choose it because it has barrier. It's not affected at all. A relatively strong effect for a lot of different cards. Solve is an interesting one as well. Uh, this is kind of thrown in as long as you have a Sun Goku GT, as in the traits that I've said before at the bottom right, you can evolve this card by paying two red and one colorless energy on top of that other card. So this other card would be the Sun Goku GT, and then you get the effects that go with it, which is just the auto uh, when you evolve or you combo, you get to draw one. There are other keywords like this Toa that has Overrealm, which uh, are shortened. And you'll find that in some of this game, find that in a lot of parts of this game because it's uh, some, you know, some of the newer cards, get, they, they get shortened text. So that way they can fit more text on there without being too much. And this Overrealm 3 basically means you get to send all of your cards in your drop area to the warp in order to um, play this card and have the minimum of three cards in your drop. So if you have three cards in your drop, 
you get to send all of them to a warp, you meet the requirement to play this card. That is the cost that you can do, or you can pay three energy for it instead. If you have five cards into your drop area and you meet that three minimum requirement, you get to send all of that into your warp and then get to play this card. Of course, the autos go off for this card. Basically what it says is that when you play for Overrealm um, and your leader card is green and yellow, they get to uh, pitch a card and then you gain 5k power for your leader. There are other cards or at least other uh, cards that actually have keywords on them that have requirements in order to uh, do the effect. So for instance, this Roshi uh, has an auto of burst two. So the auto says when this card attacks, draw one. But first you have to meet the requirement of bursting two. So you must place the top two cards in your deck into your drop area to activate this skill. So in order to draw that one card, you actually have to uh, make sure that you have those two cards from the top of your deck into your drop area. Good thing to remind uh, that you can use awakening as a keyword because it is a keyword um, during your main phase and as well as your activate battle phase, like I mentioned before. This Frieza that actually has blocker and basically what it says is just like how it says here. We have this Frieza which has blocker and basically what it does is what it says here. When one of your other cards is attacked, not this card, you may switch this card to rest mode and then you change the target of that attack to this card don't want your leader to take damage and you're, there's something like a 25,000 attack coming your way to your leader and you know you can't combo out of it so you have this guy on the field, you can switch it to rest mode and then it will go into this card instead. That battle, battle will finish with this card instead of with your leader. So remember that you actually have to have this on the field in order for the blocker effect to take effect. Because you can't switch something that's in active mode to rest mode if it's in your hand, right? And again, a good reminder with the auto is that when it's KO'd, again, from that battle, you get to choose up to one Frieza card, as in the name here, uh, with the energy cost of three in your hand, and then play it. Last one are the activate main and activate battle effects or just activate in general that I've been mentioning throughout the entire video and is that and basically what it means is that activate a skill uh, you can activate a skill during the appropriate timing which means uh, activate uh, lastly activate is basically the stuff that I've been talking about throughout the video and what that means is that you can activate a skill during the appropriate timing so activate main would be during your main phase activate battle is during a battle which is generally your combo step and then you can't carry out the skill after you pay the cost and with this card in particular is that the activate main is that you pay the two energy during your main phase in order to uh, gain the effect. For this guy, if you have three or more energy, you pay the two costs and it's your main phase and you choose one of your Vegeta or yellow Vegeta cards and yellow Trunks cards uh, in your battle area, you get to play this from your hand and then place right underneath the card uh, afterwards. Activate Battle says is that you can only do it one time throughout the entire. Activate Battle has a limit one, which basically means if you have multiple copies of this guy on the field, you can only do it once per that turn. You get to place two cards underneath the card in the drop area or the owner's drop area and then draw one card and then choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and then KO them. And now this guy has triple strike for the battle, which means you're going at them with a critical and triple strike with 35,000 power. It's a pretty good finisher and really good overall and why it's important to understand uh, these two types of effects kind of combo each other. All right, so that's pretty much all I can really teach you, honestly. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, this video is really just to kind of get you going and as well as to start you out as far as to play the Dragon Ball Super card game. You're going to have a lot of questions and honestly, you're going to answer them by playing the game over and over again and as well as asking the community and as well as those who may be around you that actually know the game. If you have any doubts about things, I would again reference the official website, look at the Q&A and as well as the rule book and maybe a few other things that are around there. Go ahead and comment below if you have any questions. I'm gonna pay attention pretty closely to this video in particular and make sure I can answer any of the questions that you may have. Go ahead and check out any of the gameplay videos to get a little bit more of a feel of what a proper game can be 
some of the competitive ones that I've done for the uh, NA Nationals and as well as the World events are pretty good barometers of like high level play. But again, there are plenty of other casual and just tabletop type of games that you can kind of uh, get a little more experience and a little bit more visual learning going on there too. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.